Welcome to a very special park date. Uh, I'm here in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. The voice that you can hear in the background that we're going to hear more of later is Farah Rexif, a professor of architecture at the university here. Um, we're in a park at the moment, uh, a small square with some plane trees, um, some grass, and some hedges. Uh, the sun just dappling down through the uh, mist on this uh, Uzbek morning. This is the first time I've ever been in uh, Uzbekistan. And um, I'm here for a tour of the city as part of the Tashkent Modernism event. This is a symposium um, of uh, academics and uh, journalists and writers and uh, architects who are coming together here in Tashkent to celebrate the modern architecture of the city, uh, the biggest city in Uzbekistan, the capital of Uzbekistan, and a city uh, that was completely rebuilt um, in the 20th century. And we're going to be taking around some of the iconic buildings of uh, the city uh, on a little tour. And uh, we're going to get to know uh, some of those buildings. I'm going to try and paint a picture for you of what we can see. And uh, we're going to listen, listen to Farah, uh, who's the expert, and um, hear, for, hear from some other people as well on this uh, on this tour so this is something a little bit different we're going to go through some parks and we're going to see some modernist architecture as we travel around uh, Tashkent and um, yeah we're going to see some of the Soviet architecture which I assume has um, been perhaps a bit neglected um, in uh, the years since the independence of Uzbekistan certainly when I've been to other uh, cities that were in the Eastern Bloc. They're not always so proud of their uh, modernist and brutalist heritage, uh, but it seems like Tashkent is um, really trying to um, protect that heritage and to attract people. Um, so we're going to go and uh, we're going to go and see some of that now, and we're going to listen uh, listen to Farah uh, as we go along. In fact, let's hear something from him now. We're outside the former museum of Lenin, which has this really unique uh, concrete facade, um, which is kind of, it's modernist, but it has these oriental oriental quirks as well. Let's hear a little bit from Farah about this, uh, about this building. In the mosques that we can see, or in the, uh, in the traditional housing. So a lot of elements have been then put together, having the cube on the top and the ground floor open, all the principles that we know, and the lantern, which is then lit during the evenings, making this pattern more, uh, more impressive. Uh, let's go maybe Where are to the, the lanterns. I mean, I mean when uh, uh, when inside is glowing. Oh, you're talking about oh, the entire building. The entire, yeah. So the when the, when the artificial lighting is on from inside during the nighttime, you see it like a like a lantern, like a big lantern mm. here as a symbol. Uh, there are cultural symbol here, which is representing Soviet modernism, Soviet society, but rooted with the traditional elements here. So this is a very nice sy symbiosis. We have here a lot of problems with cars right now. Uh, you will get used to it, I hope, but we we're not still getting used to it. <laughs> Can we go up the steps? Yeah, yeah, let's go up the stairs. This is more interesting even. Ah, oh, they're going also that way. Uh-oh. Right, it's all us. Uh, you know the the whole uh, Soviet era here after the Second World War. There were a lot of people, engineers, architects coming from all republics to Tashkent. Tashkent was the symbol of a multicultural, multinational city for in in the Soviet Union because of the like eva being evacuated a lot of people from the eastern part of the so uh, western part of the Soviet Union during the war. They have just settled here. Many people just uh, like the weather, everything else, the food. So they 
started to, to create everything here and, and try to identify themselves with Tashkent. So basically there are people coming from other parts, but slowly they're becoming locals. And uh, yeah, the relevancy is a vernacular architecture as yeah, an interpretation. Yeah, because they were started to, to understand the culture here and then slowly they became Uzbeks uh, in terms of uh, local context. But this was always a mix. Some Uzbek architects uh, the, with an Uzbek nationality, they were also being engaged with, uh, with creating these masterpieces. Uh, but a lot of architects were mostly from coming uh, other, other parts of the Soviet Union and then settling here in Tashkent. And this is in, in some way brought some know-how because they got the new vision and the, with the new vision they, they looked on the, on the local traditional architecture and tried to reinterpret it, this. Because if only Uzbek people from here would build this, this would probably look like, a, again, another traditional building of a, another madrasa or another mosque. So that's why there was uh, cooperation and symbi symbiosis of different cultures, which brought, brought in the local context this kind of masterpieces here. So we're walking around uh, Tashkent's um, city center. Um, I've just stopped um, in the middle of some of our architecture uh, tour to see that um, there's a lot of donut shops here. They love their donuts. So if you come to uh, Uzbekistan, you can definitely uh, definitely do well for donuts. I can smell that kind of uh, burnt sugary tang on the air, and there are these donut shops everywhere. We're in this kind of um, hello. It's a cleaner having a little chit chat on the phone. Um, there's this kind of pedestrianised street where people come um, to have uh, have fun in the evening, almost like a sort of fun fair uh, type thing. But yeah, donuts, uh, donuts all over the place. Well, we've just been taken into a restaurant, uh, which is quite funny. The um, waiters were kind of look at, looking at us uh, like, well, what are you guys doing? Uh, and our very cool architecture professor um, walked straight through everybody and uh, <laughs> took us into this uh, restaurant, which is famous. Uh, the Zerahan restaurant, which is famous from the uh, 1970s, uh, took us up to this balcony where you can see uh, down into the courtyard where people are eating. And uh, one of the waiters is uh, is <laughs> walking up the stairs, <laughs> looking a bit high, <laughs> looking a bit baffled. I think the staff of this restaurant are uh, thinking, "What what is going on?" Um, but uh, this is interesting because. A lot of the time when I um, uh, like to sort of go on a walk, explore architecture, often uh, it does involve, if you want to go into a building, it does involve that moment where you, um, you kind of have to decide whether to either A, ask someone whether you can come in, or B, just walk in uh, and hope that it's going to be okay. Uh, this doesn't work very well in Britain, of course, because uh, you'll often get security guards saying what the hell's happening. This is actually very funny now because uh, a number of restaurant staff are now <laughs> coming up to the balcony and looking at, looking at the group of us and um, uh, kind of wondering what, uh, what's happening. I wish I could talk to them, but my Uzbek is uh, very bad. Okay, we're going down into a tunnel under the road towards the Hotel Uzbekistan and I'm here uh, now with Nicola Chilton. Nicola, how are you, how are you enjoying Tash... I can't even say it. How do you say it? Tash Kent. Tash Kent. How are you enjoying Tash Kent so far? I am really excited to be back here because the yeah. last time I came here was five years ago. Yeah, you've um, been here before. I have, yeah. I came on a family holiday with my parents. Yeah. And uh, 
one of the first things that we did when we arrived was checked into the Hotel Uzbekistan. Which we're walking towards now, yeah. And how did you find the Hotel Uzbekistan? How did I find it in terms of staying? Or, yeah. Um, it's, it's like stepping back into a time that you've never actually experienced before. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, architecturally, it's fascinating. But when you walk in, it's... It's like a relic from the past. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, the interior design is also a relic from the past. It's lots of um, flouncy polyester sheets and that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> um, but as an experience, it's fascinating because it's not like any th any other hotel mm. I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah. Um, they. It, it's the, they, they take your passport when you check in and keep it for a few hours and uh, it feels like a real throwback. Yeah. Um, but they have a funky little bar that you can sit in and have a right. beer. They have uh, very basic services, let's say. But yeah. as there's nothing like it anywhere, so... Yeah. Give it, give it a go. Give it a go. Give we're, it a go for a night. So we're walking towards it now. It's this huge building, one of the tallest... Uh, buildings in Tashkent and I guess one of the most recognizable with this crazy uh, facade on the front of it but yeah it's very very Soviet looking isn't it I've stayed in hotels like this before in different places and it's quite I always find it quite strange I don't know what the rooms were like but when I've been to places like this they're not very kind of modernist right you go in the room and there'll be kind of like a chintzy was it quite chintzy in the room? It was very there? chintzy. Lots of frilly cushions. Yeah. Lots of kind of velour. Yeah. Lots of gold fabrics. Yeah. So yeah, it's got that kind of the throwback to the modernism, but with how somebody imagined the future of luxury might look maybe right. thirty years ago. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. But when you were inside, I mean, when I stayed, the entire facade was lit up at night with a, a huge ad that I think was for Coca-Cola. Oh. So it was this, this real dichotomy of yeah. being inside with what feels like a Soviet relic yeah. and then having full-on capitalism plastered all over the front of it. Yeah, that, that kind of juxtaposition of both of those things is really, really interesting, yeah. isn't it? Um, yeah, those... It looks better from the outside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's often the way with these buildings, isn't it? They look great from the outside. I love the outside. And then you see the interior photos and you're like, oh, no. But it's, do you know what makes me laugh as well? Like, these concrete buildings, they never, yeah, they never kind of admit to the modernism inside in the, in the older Brutus buildings like this, right? But then you see, you know, like, a lot of uh, new luxury hotels will go for that kind of exposed concrete uh, a mid-century vibe right exactly yeah. a mid-century thing because it's cool um and it's quite interesting to kind of see see that isn't it we're, we're missing uh missing far as uh far as chat up aren't we thanks nicola for your insights you. into the uh, hotel uzbekistan so we're here on uh Farah just told us that we're here on uh what uh, tashkent citizens call their broadway um this is one of the, one of the main streets through the city, which is pedestrianised uh, near where I was just talking to you uh, from, uh, where the the donut stands were. Um, it's a, either a real or fake Starbucks. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and we're now, in fact, in a park. Yes, um, I'm not sure the exact uh, name of the park, but there's a park. Uh, in front of the hotel is Bekistan. We can find out exactly where we are. Um, which is very well manicured. They're definitely uh, taking very good care of the city. It's very clean. Uh, it makes me think of Minsk in that way a little bit. Minsk was incredibly clean uh, when I went there. And um, yeah, we saw some, we just saw some. Uh, ladies uh, sweeping the streets with uh, those witches broomsticks uh, that have kind of birch uh, birch uh, ends uh, they have the they were having they were wearing those uh, smocks that you see soviet cleaning ladies wear and soviet dinner ladies as well uh, the cleaning ladies smocks are blue 
And in fact, there's one over here with a headscarf. She's wearing a headscarf and she's got this blue smock and um, yeah, this broomstick. In fact, let's go over to see her. We're walking past Amir Temur, his uh, uh, an Uzbek hero, uh, a statue of him on horseback. Uh, it says strength, strength in justice. Um, and yeah, that one of the cleaning ladies keeping the park clean. Um, and some tourists. We found our first tourists here as well. Tashkent, not a touristy city. Uh, not somewhere that's on a lot of um, itineraries at the moment, but I guess that's uh, one thing they want to change. I think they want to make it more uh, more accessible, more attractive to tourists. Um, so we're now walking up to the, the hotel Uzbekistan. I don't often go on group uh, group trips, but I thought I would today because it's good to get ins uh, insight, expert insight far as a great a great tour guide um, it's very funny with uh, anything involving a group because you have lots of different people going at their own uh, at their own pace so there's some people going faster uh, some people slower you'll perhaps wonder where certain people have gone um, and uh, very interesting insight into uh, into um, yeah, different people's styles of uh, of visiting. It's very very weird being on a group group trip. I often do a lot of individual ones where it's just me. Right, so we're walking up towards the hotel Uzbekistan now, which we can see looming like something from Star Wars. It's um, very imposing, uh, kind of curved curved frontage. It's an amazing Soviet hotel. I'm going to stop here for a second and take a photo. What you can hear in the background there is uh, an Uzbek TV presenter making a TV uh, program about uh, the Hotel Uzbekistan, which is in front of us now. You can hear the fountains. And then this absolutely monumental facade unmistakable one of the icons of the city just walking past the fountains now um, and there's some fake stalks in the garden uh, a very cool logo on the front of the hotel uh, very questionable fonts always quite funny when you go to Soviet post-Soviet countries uh, very interesting use of uh, strange fonts now, I'm going to go inside. Hi. Some, uh, here. We're going to go inside the lobby of the Hotel Uzbekistan. There is a very friendly looking uh, comedy statue. I love this guy. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> it's the guy with a Uzbek traditional dress and traditional hat on welcoming us uh, to the hotel. Like one of those... Uh, <laughs> Kind of quite funny statues. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever recorded anything for Park Date. In a metro station, we're in Patkotan. Metro station, one of those fabulous, overblown uh, Soviet stations. I'm on a rickety old escalator, and as per the rules of escalators uh, in Eastern Bloc countries, you have to have a lady sat... Uh, in a chair at the bottom of the escalator, uh, just looking up. I'm not quite sure what she does, uh, but uh, those are the rules. Uh, and uh, we're just about to walk out of the out of the metro station. Oh, there's very cool uh, freeze around the entrance hall here, which shows the Olympic uh, Olympic rings and. Uh, an archer. This is lovely, made of uh, bronze, I think. Looks like something uh, that would look very at home in an Arndale Centre. Reminds me of Bradford Arndale Centre a little bit. I'll keep my voice down when I say that, though. There's a lot of uh, 
people who know much more about architecture than me. Looking around. If we can see it or not, because it's anyways on our way to, to yeah. other objects. Walking, walking past the telecommunications, telecommunications centre uh, right. with some satellite dishes on top. Yep. This is where is this where they make the where the TV station TV, TV station TV right. station is based. Uh, partially, uh, there is another another one for uh, other like there are many many channels. Mm. Some of them are making here. Some of them are making on the other side. There is another building uh, next to the the skyscraper which we have seen this nest one. Yeah, the the most highest one. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. that's, what very, mean? <laughs> that's very good <laughs> yeah we're looking at the the tv and communications building now um with a really really impressive uh, mosaic we worked on a project in Budapest, uh, which was there really impressive mosaic on the side the Hungarian, uh, um but yeah we were just joking about uh whether there'd be an open house uh, in tashkent uh, which always goes down very well in London and New York, doesn't it? Open house, people want to go and see um, see those uh, see those buildings. So we're in the cinema uh, at the centre of Tashkent for once with amazing acoustics. Listen to that. This is incredible. The amount of background noise I get in this podcast drives me to distraction but here we are in a uh, silent place with amazing acoustics stood on the stage in front of this huge curved screen uh, with the rakes of seats stretching back um, I think this uh, stage can be used for theatrical performances uh, and for cinema but a wonderful mid-century uh, auditorium here it makes you the red seats make me think of um, a kind of uh, Politburo esque uh, scenario where you would have uh, have the um, uh, Communist Party officials sort of lined up, ready to watch uh, some kind of performance or uh, perhaps a political conference. <laughs> These on the wall, you've seen the, uh, mm -hmm. the big wall paintings. Yeah, yeah. Most, mostly, these are the yeah. elements which have been yeah. mm -hmm. Also, the we have seen the some glass, uh, glass color, windows, color, glass windows, mm. which, which we can check. Right How now. are the acoustics here? <laughs> acoustics. Um, it's a beautiful proportion. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Shower. Like it's yeah. it's a amazing experience when you sit and listen mm -hmm. to the sounds. It's yeah, so quiet, it's isn't like it? It's a bubble, yeah. completely mm. bubble. Mm. It's a palace cinema, a cinema palace named after Al Chernoy because we have Al Chernoy, uh, like all complex, like Street Avenue Al Chernoy. This is the great poet, poet of Uzbekistan, uh, kind of Goethe for Germans, but mm. uh, Al Chernoy is the one, the big figure in literature for Uzbek people. And there is a whole complex, the, the, uh, also his Al Chernoy statue over there with the uh, literature museum. Uh, named also after Al Chernoy yeah. and the metro station, which we will go also to Al Chernoy. You will again see that that inscription Al Chernoy metro station from where we will go to Cosmonauts. So all this area, uh, memorizing the the great poem uh, poets because he was the cultural figure for Uzbek. So that's why this is also a cultural palace in a way. So you've memorized some of his poems. You Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's have some poetry, right? <laughs> we'll get on YouTube. Days out. Okay, so we're continuing our walk around Tashkent. We're going to have a little chat now with Mike Novotny. Mike, thank you uh, for joining. Uh, it's a pleasure. Joining us, we <laughs> nearly fell in a hole there as we were walking across the road. Um, what are your impressions of Tashkent so far, Mike? How have you found it? Uh, so I've been here for two days now, and uh, it's quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, I'm not uh, 
totally unbiased because I really love post-war architecture from Me the 1960s, 70s. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm easily won over. And I uh, actually moved from Germany to Vienna 20 years ago because also because I wanted to explore Eastern Europe and especially like socialist architecture. We yeah. did a book about socialist architecture in Slovakia. And many things uh, I found familiar from, from that era, from, from other countries also. The stories that we've been told so far mm. today and, and yesterday, how different generations respond to these buildings, like they were, of course, very unpopular in the 1990s after the yeah. change, because architecture from that era is not very popular usually anyway. So yeah. <laughs> if it's associated with a certain regime which you've won over, then uh, which has stopped. Uh, it's even less popular usually. Yeah, this but it's is been rediscovered now, which is quite interesting. Exactly, it's been rediscovered, isn't it? And this was the exact thing that I think I've been bringing up with people that mm. the idea that it became toxic when all these countries became independent. They wanted to yeah. forget that communist past and the architecture that was associated with communism yeah. became problematic. Um, but yeah, do you think it's maybe being reassessed now, rediscovered? I, I have the impression because uh, yesterday evening when the exhibition of these buildings was open there was such a, a lot of young people like the young students mm. maybe in their 20s and they, they had they seemed like they were not being forced to attend but they yeah. were doing it of uh, their own uh, will and, and they seemed very interested in that yeah because they don't have this this, this baggage I mean it's, it's understandable like in the 90s when you're I don't know 30, 40 year old architect and you're just starting to build a new nation yeah. Uh, you're not really looking back. Yeah. But now you have, so you can do both, I guess. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It's almost like the people that grew up with that brutalist architecture didn't didn't really like it, but then yeah, younger people are, are much more into it. It's, yeah. Yeah, got a kind of cult cult following, hasn't it? But did you see that in uh, Slovakia as well? I've all, I'm a big fan of the UFO bridge in yes. Bratislava. Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of things like that to see around mm -hmm. around there, isn't there? Yeah, we actually went there in 2004, I think, for the first time, and, mm. the, and the the cafe and the, and the UFO bridge was still in its original interior. Yeah. They changed it since then. Uh, and back then, we also talked to some of the architects who were still alive, and they were in their 80s mm. at that time. And this is very interesting for us from a Western perspective, knowing nothing how buildings were designed in socialist countries, to have that explained to us, like they mm. were, what kind of teams were actually designing them. Uh, how individual and how collective that was and, and it was much more individual than you would think um, and they had all the information about what was going on in the west architecture wise so it was uh, it was actually quite quite open and quite there was quite a lot of space for experimentation it was yeah. not just slabs yeah and fabrication definitely do you have um, any favorite modern buildings in vienna i love the uh, votruba church I think that's really incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's more of a sculpture. Actually. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, but it's it's very popular. It's uh, brutalist in a way. Mm. Yeah. But my um, my one one favorite is actually from. It's a bit earlier. I think it's from 1910. It's at Sachal House by Josef Plechnik, and it's right in the center next to St. Stephen's Cathedral because. He was really modern before modernism even existed, but like yeah. Otto Wagner in a way. As well. Yeah, so he did the best facades ever. <laughs> yeah, I need to check that out. I love those Otto Wagner buildings, the <laughs> S-Bahn stations. Yeah, like yeah. Karlsplatz are really cool, aren't they? And the Secession Gallery. Um, and have you had any? Have you noticed any favourite buildings or favourite things about Tashkent? Uh, while well, you've been here in these two days, any highlights from Tashkent? Um, yeah, I really like the the ex Lenin uh, museum, which we saw this morning. We saw this morning, uh, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. It's, that was very. The cool. interior, it's it's great. It's also a bit weird because you have this very, uh, even though the statue isn't there anymore, it sort of still breathes the atmosphere of yeah. uh, celebrating something which which is now gone. But but the central room is so still charged with yeah. some kind of holy atmosphere it's a bit almost like a church and yeah now it's a museum but you don't can't really do anything with the space in terms of museum because it's just too big yeah exactly <laughs> the space kind of takes over so the exhibit it's, it's very weird but uh, and i also really like these the the intersection of like international modernism and and local tradition and like islamic architecture they have here yeah and they had that in so many countries in the world because uh, 
It wasn't all just international and all the same. It was in some cases, but especially in the USSR with so many regional republics, there's so many variations. Uh, yeah, you, local variations. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. There's almost a kind of kitsch feel to some of the modernism here, isn't there? Like. It's it's got a lot of decoration yeah. and the, yeah the Islamic influences the local influences. Um, so we're going to walk into the the metro station now. Mike, Mike, thanks for um, talking us through that. We're in another uh, metro station announcement. Exactly. Um, a train is about to come barreling through this metro station. Okay. Soviet metros are the best. Brilliant blue train with a white stripe down, it's fantastic. Um, so we're in this metro station called Cosmonauts, and uh, unsurprisingly, there are images along the walls of um, astronauts and uh, older people. I think someone like Nicholas Copernicus or something. These 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 astronauts look very old. Are they are they more like thinkers or something? Wait, does he have a, a what is, what is, is the uh, Russian version of Copernicus or right? Yeah. The Russian version of Copernicus. Yeah. So. Right, so people who were theorising about space. Um, but yeah, another fantastic metro station. Should I record more, more episodes of the podcast than the metro station? Maybe, maybe. Um, one of the funniest things about this metro station is you take your ticket, uh, you scan it on the thing, and then you chuck it in the bin. It's fantastic. Okay, so we're coming to the final part of the tour of Tashkent. I mean, another park. I've been trying to find out the names of the parks, should you wish to come and visit them. Um, uh, a lot of them have different names, or the names that changed after uh, communism ended and um, Uzbekistan became an independent country. But we're in another park now. Uh, very lovely. The city's so clean. Very impressive. Uh, there was a statue, a golden statue of a family sat on a bench. And uh, here's one of these brilliant uh, Russian corner shops that I love. They have a sweet tooth here. Oh my gosh. So this is a cake, cake shop, sweet shop. They really do like uh, like their sweet foods here. Um, and by the side of the park, then we're coming to another one of these modernist buildings that uh, we've been taken uh, taken to see. And this one, in fact, is a block of flats, uh, which does look very nice. Was probably quite an exclusive uh, building back in the day, I imagine. Uh, it's uh, I think it's about 16 stories brilliant uh, Russian typeface on the front and um, maybe Fire will be telling us more about uh, about this building let's go and find out if uh, if we're going to go uh, Fire, are we going to go into this building? oh I hope so yeah we're going to see if we can get in it looks like the building's guarded by a cat there's a cat here. We need to make sure uh, we need to make sure that the cat can uh, uh, can approve us to approve us to enter. So we're just just finding out if we can go in go in this building. I kind of want to pet the cat. Should I do that? I'm not sure if it's allowed. Hi, cat. I guess you speak Russian, don't you? Cat does look very friendly. Maybe we should have, um, have more cats on the, on the podcast. The, what was that? I think 
<laughs> the cat's trying to tell us something. It's actually a very sweet old woman stood next to the cat. I don't know if she owns it. I better take a photo so you don't think I've gone completely, uh, completely crazy. Hello, cat. Okay, so what do you think about Tashkent, cat? Yeah? Do you like living here? Do you like it here? I do fear that I might be getting uh, getting fleas if I stroke it too much, but um, it's very sweet to see. I fear actually the cat may have got locked out. I think what it's, I think what I was trying to say is that it wants. You need to get a key to get in, don't you? Yeah, maybe we'll let the cat in. Okay, we're going to go inside the building now. Yeah. yeah, which one are you thinking of? Uh, World's End in Chelsea. Yes, the World's End, yeah, very nice, isn't it? I love the brick, uh, like you don't see many brick buildings like that. It's like a yeah. Brutus building, but in brick, isn't exactly, it? Yeah. Exactly, very cool. It's super dense and super, and still yeah. super innovative. Elevated gardens. Yeah, exactly. The space is like this. Uh, yeah, we're in this building, the Pearl Zemchuk, which is this multi-level housing complex. But it's really interesting because everyone's changed their doors. So you kind of have this modernism thing, but then um, with these weird, weird doors. Mike, have you ever been to the Barbican? Do you like the Barbican? It's actually my favorite building in the world, and I, want I would to live there. actually marry the Barbican yeah. if I could marry a building <laughs> if I wasn't already married. Yeah. I um, want to live there. I have, I have the a best thing. Yeah, my friend Lucy lives there. And in fact, uh, there's another episode of the podcast you can listen to where I interview Lucy in the gardens in the Barbican, uh, which you, you might enjoy. But yeah, it's a great, a great place. Living there would be amazing, wouldn't it? Fantastic, uh, fantastic building. So we're walking through this building. We're walking down the stairs, but we haven't seen any, um, any residents yet. I don't know... Where they are well apart from the cat obviously but um ah oh, here's some residents yeah they don't look very happy <laughs> to say um but um does anyone in communist countries are you allowed to say that i'm not sure but <laughs> people often seem to be a little bit grumpy oh wow well, maybe this is where the cat lives as well because there's a lot of cat food um left out on the steps I mean, yeah, here's another cat. Lots of cats in the building. So we are very lucky today because uh, well, we will first go to see inside. There is actually a beautiful sculpture of the penne and a model of the whole complex to understand how it works. Then we go to see the actual uh, machine and apparently today they are doing an experiment so you can see also how no it works. <laughs> So what you just heard there uh, was uh, an introduction uh, to a very special place that not many people get to go. Uh, I'm with a group of people you can hear, hear the chattering voices in the background and we've been allowed into the, uh, well this place has so many names, what should we call it? It's the Institute of Material Sciences, part of uh, the Uzbekistan Academy of Sciences. Um, it is something completely unique in a way but in another way maybe not so unique it's a kind of research station um, which is uh, something that was quite uh, common in communist times when science and technology and industry were uh, really at the forefront of what they were often uh, trying to do in a lot of these countries. Uh, but what they were doing here is completely unique and there's a structure that I've never seen the likes of uh, anywhere else, um, which we're gonna see in a minute, but first we're being taken 
into this building. So what they've basically done is worked out how to use the rays of the sun to create a very, very hot temperature so that they can um, then do these uh, scientific experiments, which are honestly a little bit beyond me. Uh, but I think it's something to do with uh, producing uh, high quality uh, alloy metals or something. I'm not really sure if uh, our guide's Russian is gonna, gonna illuminate me much. But anyway, we're in this uh, opening, uh, in this sort of welcome hall here with a nice uh, sun-esque sculpture hanging from the ceiling. And then after that, we're gonna go and see the main attraction, but it kind of reminds me of um, other sort of Soviet scientific places where you see <laughs> a sort of combination of high technology and rusting pipes, flaking, flaking buildings. Let's hear some more about what's, uh, what's happening. Теперь сюда вот, поближе, где наш макет, это уже называется, ну макет, конечно, это большая солнечная печь. Big Sun Furnace. The Big Sun Furnace, that's how, that's how we're going to call it. Um, and that has, um, uh, yeah, enabled these science experiments to take place, which we're going to go and see in a minute. So now they're explaining to us um, what happens here during the experiments. And I'm actually holding in my hand right now um, a piece of the Russian uh, space uh, rocket, a uh, piece of graphite that I guess they've made um, here, which is uh, very uh, black and shiny and curved. It just looks like a bit of a bit of a barrel, to be honest. But um, yeah, this is off an actual Russian space rocket. I love the guy giving the um, giving the tour here. By the way, he's um, uh, he's got a one of those Ukrainian skull caps on, Ukrainian, uh, Uzbekistani skull caps on as well. And uh, he's very, very happy to be showing us around. It's like being on a school trip. And sometimes vapor. And make electricity with the rocket. Uh, so you're hearing some more information there. So they've brought us to this place that I'm sure kids would love. Uh, where they set up various uh, comedy experiments to show how the principle of the solar uh, conductor works. Uh, for example, there's this round array of mirrors with a kettle uh, in the middle of it uh, where they boil some water and they can make tea for you. And then there's um, uh, one where they've arranged like a barbecue so you can cook some food using the uh, using the sun's rays um, uh, unless I just thought that was some kind of <laughs> dangerous malfunction uh, Chernobyl-esque malfunction in the background is just someone uh, sawing something just normal normal here well you heard that in the background our guide said don't come too close it's dangerous but if I step away from the experiments and what you can see is something I've never seen in my life. It's this absolutely enormous 22-storey high building, um, which is kind of curved uh, like a con concave curve. And um, it, 
is covered in mirrors um, and then it's facing a hill which I'm just walking up now and on the hill are even more mirrors, giant square mirrors uh, which are arranged in rows going up the hill facing this huge 22 story building with mirrors on so the mirrors are kind of facing each other and and the sun is beating down over on the left hand side high in the sky they told us it was going to be cold today i, I don't know um i think it because it gets up to 50 degrees here they keep saying it's cold all the time but it's really not it's actually very very warm uh and you can tell how strong the sun is i should have said earlier but i'm not in tashkent now we're in the mountains of Uzbekistan um, we've come one hour from Tashkent through a small town called Parkent and into the mountains I can see these huge huge mountains away to the left uh, stretching up to the sky a sort of hazy hazy morning the sun is very very strong but yeah we're in this uh, place where the sun is very powerful and this huge experiment then is harnessing the power of the sun um, for science and um, it's absolutely incredible I'd never heard of this place until a few days ago and um, it's it's brilliant but yeah really defined by this huge building um, with all these mirrors on it which uh, I think we're going to look uh, we're going to get to look at and get to go up in a minute but it really is the most incredible weird sight um, this green mountain with this huge, uh, huge science experiment going on, um, and it's fantastic. But also, I feel that it could go wrong <laughs> in quite spectacular style. So, as with all, uh, as with all communist era stuff, disaster seems to be. But uh, but a minute away, and in fact, <laughs> there seems to be some conversation about something. I wish I knew. I wish I knew more Russian. I feel like um, things could always go wrong. But anyway, very very interesting. Um, and uh, on the subject of uh, parks, we've got these wonderful pine trees arrayed all around as well. Okay, so in the background, we've got a guy angle grinding something, and you're going to hear occasional um, bits of metal clanking against metal because we've now come to the top of this um, uh, this building, this this kind of solar furnace building, 22 stories up. Uh, I'm up at the top with uh, some other intrepid explorers. Everyone's looking around like. <laughs> How did we get up here? Is it safe? Um, it's um, really incredible though. There's this metal uh, metal sort of uh, stairway that leads all the way to the top. And uh, yeah, from the top here, you can see the mirrors arrayed on this hill that face towards the, um, the solar furnace and then uh, these unbelievable uh, brown mountains stretching out into the distance. Um, but yeah, it kind of reminds me of, uh, I was just talking to um, Florian, who's one of, our, uh, one of our guides and leaders, about um, how this is kind of similar to Teufelsberg in Berlin a little bit. Uh, those uh, abandoned, uh, abandoned listening towers that you can, that you can go up. Uh, but yeah, absolutely incredible, weird sight. That I don't think you'd expect right here in the uh, foothills of the of the Uzbek uh, mountains. <laughs> a lot of it's quite a lot of this structure is quite rusty, um, and uh, people have uh, you can hear the metal, right? People have uh, <laughs> kind of carved their names in it as well. I believe you can come here on tours. Um, so yeah. Come and check it out. So that was 
uh, a tour of Tashkent. Uh, great city, really enjoyed it. Amazing modern buildings uh, and this uh, 60s master plan. Uh, very Soviet, very exotic, lots going on. Um, I'm now at the edge of another park in the centre. Uh, the one thing I will say about Tashkent is there's a lot of big roads and uh, you can hear in the background the traffic noise. We've gone from the silence of the panorama, uh, panorama cinema to the rather noisier um, side of uh, one of these massive Stalinist boulevards uh, with a quiet park fountains on one side and then this um, big road in the middle and as one of uh, my fellow media uh, people pointed out all the cars are white I'm looking at an absolute sea of white cars the only exception is uh, one of these silver rollers but let me find somewhere a little bit quieter to sign off um, let's come into a building now um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Something a little bit different. You've heard it from uh, a few different people, a few different voices, and uh, some interesting uh, impressions of Tashkent. Let me know your thoughts. Like or hate this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, as usual, uh, remember to uh, leave us a review if possible. Uh, subscribe and follow us on socials at Park Day Podcast. I will be back again soon with another episode of Part Day. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.